So if you learn the tactics, the ways to craft the prompts, you can actually use ChatGPT to be very powerful, very effective. I mean, it writes scripts. You can write a documentary with the shit. It, it has invented a new way of learning, actually, right? So instead of going to Wikipedia, like manually typing in, if you want to learn about what's transhumanism, you type into Google or DuckDuckGo, what is transhumanism? You scan for the best sites. Maybe you click the Wikipedia, put that in one tab because you're going to need that anyway. Let's look for some other sites. Okay, here's a forum. Here's a Reddit post. Okay, you know, that's generally how we Google search. But with ChatGPT, all you do is log on. And if you were to just ask, can you explain to me what transhumanism is? What are its basic tenets? And what is the current status of the transhumanist movement as it stands today? And just watch what it says. So it saves you the time of finding these different websites. The data seems to be universally considered to be accurate. Aside, remember, aside from the regulations and the censorship, okay? We know that, that like I said, we already know that. But to combat that, you have to learn how to give it the correct prompt. So what I'm saying, guys, is maybe I might do a video how to really use this. You guys can figure it out for yourself, too. But if you're like me, I wasn't really that interested in trying it. I heard the hype. I'm like, I get it. AI, dude, I get it. But the chat kept going. And I'm like, okay, fine. Fuck, I caved. What is this chat GPT stuff? And now that I've actually used it, I can really see how it can become beneficial on like a day-to-day -day basis for acquiring information. What were the most major seminal moments of 2018? It'll give you a full list of the most important things that happened in 2018. Okay, ChatGPT, can you please write me an essay about each of those seminal moments? And then also, could you please include the general public reaction to each of those uh, seminal moments, important moments? It will do that. It will do that. So let's pretend that like right now you sat down at your computer to do a Google search about a subject you want to learn about anyway, right? But instead you decide to try ChatGPT for that information anyway, uh, instead, right? Instead of Google, perhaps you're looking for, let's use the book for as an example, just because like I said, it's fresh, it's in my mind. So what was the book? So you just put it in. What was the book Impact of Science on Society by Bertrand Russell about? And right now we're just trying to get an idea. Maybe you heard the name of that book. What's that about? Sounds interesting, but what's the whole thing about? And it gives it to you. It gives you when it was published. The book explores the ways in which scientific and technological advances have influenced society. Increased productivity, increased health care. Russell, Russell also examines the impact of science on various aspects of life politics, education. This is all accurate because I just read the books myself. This is extensive. So right now you could have either navigated for a few minutes looking for the proper pages, good enough pages to get the information, hopped on Wikipedia and got the official resource, or you can use a tool like ChatGPT that will give you an answer based on the collective data set, which is massive, as opposed to just what Wikipedia said. Okay, so that's a pretty good summary. Um, but let's ask it this. What were the most important things about the book? What did Bertrand Russell believe to be, you know, the most important issues? See what it says to that. It's kind of a badly crafted question, but I'm crashing here. So Bertrand Russell's book, it's a complex book that so covers a wide range of topics. However, some of the most important parts of the books and problems that Russell, the author, believed were most important include, look at this, the potential for scientific and technological progress to create a rational and just society. Russell believed that he, uh, the advances in society or science and tech had the potential to make life better for everyone. The dangers of allowing scientific progress to be controlled by a small elite. Russell argued that one of the most important problems was the potential for a small group of people to control scientific progress. Science for destructive purposes. So if you recall, one of the really interesting beliefs that Bertrand Russell expands on in his book, which is really educational and pot good for us, being as he's one of the globalist elites and we need to know what they think about this overpopulation stuff. 
After all, our world is lurching and changing and turning and transforming in pursuit of combating these things. So we know that overpopulation and eugenics were brought up in the book. Let's narrow the scope. Instead, of we summarize the book. We narrowed it down to what ChatGPT says is the most important parts of the book, but now let's really narrow it down. What are Bertrand Russell's thoughts on overpopulation in that book? In the book, what were Bertrand Russell's thoughts on overpopulation? Now you can add an additional prompt, right? You might think that's a good enough question, and it is by itself, sure. But if you narrow the question, the prompt even better, let's prompt it to actually make a bulleted list and make it exhaustive in the book what were his thoughts on overpop please list him in a bulleted list and here it is it's generating so once again i understand the pitfalls of ai i understand that it's a real disruptive tech i understand that uh it might end up in it's the same thing that is responsible for us being pushed into this technological slavery. My point is it's not going anywhere. So at least be able to utilize it for some good along the way. And here it is, a bulleted list. Russell argued that overpop was a serious problem. He believed that the root cause of overpop was a lack of education. Russell suggested that government should take a more active role in promoting family planning. Remember, birth control, contraception. He also believed that reducing population growth would require changes in social attitudes. That's where the Club of Rome and UNESCO comes in. We need a uh, an H.G. Wells, Global Revolution in Thought. This is all accurate. I read the book myself. He didn't idea. He didn't believe in coercion of force. And it, what's really cool is you can be informal in the way you ask. So, for example, instead of saying, can you also make a bulleted list of whatever, I'm just going to say this. Okay, can you do a bulleted list of eugenics now? Like, I don't have to mention once again that I mean a bulleted list of ideas of eugenics in the book. It already knows that. Russell was critical of eugenics. Now remember, this isn't going to be an exhausted list. So the key thing to remember with ChatGPT, guys, is after it provides you this information, simply prompt it to make more bullets. So after this is done, I'm going to show you. I'm going to say, that's a great list. Can you please add more to the list? And it will do it most times. Good list. <laughs> Can you please add more to the list? Let's see what it does. It's worked every time I've done it. Yeah, see? So there, that's the that's how it results in like sort of hidden information. There's layers. So if you didn't prompt it again, you would have been left with just those bullet points, thinking that that is all it's able to give you. But it's not. With a follow-up prompt saying, okay, how about more? Reword things. Try it again. You become good at the craft of unlocking info at lightning speed far quicker than clicking around the internet might do. Not to mention, on the internet, you might have to read huge blocks of text. You're left at the whim of however the author formatted their work. But here... I just took a book and instead of him summarizing the whole thing, open, you know, chat GPT, I decided, do you mind just putting it into bullet points for me? Okay, now zone in and talk about this overpopulation topic within this big book specifically. Narrow that down. In half the time or, or less than I could have learned about it um, on the internet. Again... It's always going to be subject to regulations. It's always going to be cucked, okay? But even though this is a tool that's helping move along the agenda that doesn't seem like a, fun, a very fun agenda, it's also the thing that might, uh, you know, make us all jobless one day. The automation of society, the mechanization of man. We are now sufficiently te technologically advanced enough to make everyone te uh, slaves, drones, a uh, circuit board, you know? But still, use it for your advantage, right? I mean, I, even the other day, writing my documentary, I said, you know what? Let's plug some prompts into ChatGPT. I took the beginning of a paragraph, and I said, given those prompts, given that data set, could you draft up two different uh, possible paragraphs that might fit? And it fucking did it. And it even gave me a detail that I was like, oh, yeah, that would probably be a good one to include. It was something I forgot. I'll show you. Can you please write me an essay? 
check this out. Can you please write me an essay about the dangers of technology and especially the Orwellian potential future that arises from centralizing that data? Take into consideration the following things. Take into consideration the following developments. Now, I'll make the bullet list to make it clean and not confuse it, if such a thing is possible, because this shit's crazy. Smart cities. Mega cities. Real-time GPS location tracking. Uh, biometric data. Um social media iphone data what else uh the internet of things the internet of bodies surveillance please also include the role you see how complex this prompt is surely it can't handle it or the answer it'll provide in response will be shitty, right? That's what you would think. <laughs> it's crazy. Please also include the potential advent of a scientific managerial group of elites, class of elites. And how a scientific dictatorship might be inevitable. inevitable as a result of it all. Watch this. This is an essay. Take a look. This is what it's generating. Technology, I can't even read it all. Technology has brought numerous benefits to society, but also poses dangers. One of the concerning potential futures is an Orwellian one in which our every move is monitored, tracking, controlled by centralized authority. This future is becoming increasingly plausible. New developments in technology emerge. Smart cities, mega cities, real-time GPS location tracking, everything I listed. Smart cities are cities that use data and tech to improve the quality of life for their citizens. However, they also collect vast amounts of data on people's movements, habits, behaviors. This data can be used to monitor and control people, which poses a significant danger to privacy. Mega cities are cities with populations of millions of people are becoming more common. These cities have a high concentration of people. It makes them vulnerable to tracking and unrest and the potential for oppressive government control. Biometric data, real-time tracking can be used to track people's movement and activities. This is crazy, right, guys? The Internet of Things. The, so right now, they're just kind of, it's still a little basic because they're really just defining the prompts I gave them. And then when they list the dangers, they're kind of like cliche dangers. So they might list all these bullet points, social media data, Internet of Things data, smart cities data. But the risk, the dangers of it, will always be the same. It might infringe on freedoms. So the follow-up prompt might be, okay, what are, make a bulleted list of all the dangers that might come about, right? It's really interesting. I had it generate some crazy fucking essays, man. If you continue on the prompt, just ask it to rewrite the essay with that new information, and it will. We must remain vigilant, it says, and hold those in power accountable for their use of technology, lest we fall prey to a scientific dictatorship. Well, so don't be a victim of AI. Maybe use it to your advantage when you can. Uh, this was the first time something like this I can see actually serving a good benefit on a daily level uh, for certain like uh, specific purposes, such as browsing the Internet for data and information. Pretty interesting, guys. All right, so I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for hanging out with me. I had a good uh, turnout today. Thank you for your support on Rockfin, especially, and BitChute, rockfin.com slash memoryhold. Thank you for all the recent tips uh, and uh, donations, whether it's Rockfin, PayPal, whatever else. Uh, you can do that. It's all in the description. Uh, but, you know, my PayPal is just, uh, you know, memoryhold. Venmo is just memoryhold. PayPal.me, memoryhold7707. Or you can hit me up on Patreon and Rockfin. $9.99 a month on Rockfin gets all my premium content as well as everybody else's. Uh, Patreon, as little as $1 a month, you can subscribe and you'll unlock um, you know, my premium videos. I have more coming now that they added that feature I'm so hyped about, direct video upload. That's the only thing in the past that stopped me from doing it more often. You also get 
crazy documents and access to resources that, um, you know, that isn't just free to use. Most of my work is free, though, like 90%. But, you know, people decide to tip me and I feel bad if I don't also like reciprocate, you know, but it isn't about the money, guys. Share this video. If you're new, please subscribe. Help grow the channel. Times are tough, man. Times are tough. I got real close to making this something. And, uh, you know, the first band wave got me. So we want more people here. We want to build the community. OK, yeah, that's about it, guys. Appreciate you hanging out. I will see you next time.